Hello, welcome to the No Rest for the Vivi podcast. My name is Claire Hill, self-belief coach and founder of the Vivi Business Club. Go and check if you've subscribed or followed. Just saying. You know the drill. You've been here before. Go and show your love. I appreciate it. Um, thank you to those of you who have reviewed the podcast on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get the podcast. I look and I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much. I'm five stars on Apple, 4.8 on Spotify. I want to know. I want to know how I can make this podcast better. Actually, It'd be great for you to tell me. I'm looking at the wrong camera again. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just... oh, okay. Thanks. Sorry, YouTube. Um, so nice to have you. Thank you for listening. I'm really, I really am so grateful for you having me going into your ears. I appreciate it. Um, one early morning. Just over a year ago, I decided to put some trainers on and go out for a run. And I created um, boundaries around this so that I would become successful, successful at it. I um, decided that I would uh, just do a lap. And if I needed to walk, I would just walk. And that was OK. I would run until it got too much and then I'd walk. And then I'd run and then I'd walk and I just kept doing it. And the first week I did that three times. Um, I think the second week I ran a little bit further. And then the third week, or maybe even the fourth, I was able to run around the block. That was incredibly unfamiliar. Incredibly unfamiliar for me. And I have never been anyone that's athletic. I grew up without a garden. Um, I was only able to um, catch a ball at age 35 um sport or movement apart from like dancing in Amadeus if you know you know uh, I haven't ever really um done anything to put my body into a way of exercise I remember actually a time where I wouldn't even really walk um even though I grew up with um we didn't have a car so we would get public transport everywhere I and I would walk a lot then. And actually, when I was um, 14, 15, 16, when I started hanging out with, you know, you know that, you know, that time, once we tried to get into some sheds. Obviously, that was exciting back then. And I would walk a lot then. And I remember the the sense of independence that I got from from walking, because if I wanted to go somewhere, as long as it was like three or four miles, I'd just walk and it was just wonderful. So um I did then but there was a, a a period of time in my 20s that I just didn't walk and I think it was because like I, I've got um I'm hypermobile which means that my uh, joints can um get quite painful and I've got it um quite a lot in my hips but actually walking really helps but running I've, tr- I've dabbled but actually be going no I'm I'm gonna be a runner was completely unfamiliar to me long story short um I am waiting for some running trainers to arrive some new running trainers and I will be taking up running again I've had to have a little break because um again because I'm hypermobile there was issues around the ligaments and muscles around my knees that I've been working on and now they're nice and strong so I'm going to start running again and um my aim is to do a 10k So, well, actually, my aim is to do a half marathon and I'm really excited about it. But when I first started that journey, I did not want to do it. I felt very uncomfortable and I didn't I would wake up and go, I do. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go. I do it first thing in the morning because I am, uh, you know, admit I am a massive procrastinator. And if I'm going to put something off, I'm going to. But I just knew that I was never going to feel ready to run. I was never going to feel ready to be a runner. I just had to do it. Um, Start before you're ready. And recently, I've been really leaning into these unfamiliar things. Now, if you're watching on YouTube or, you know, anywhere that you can watch this, behind me is a massive pink wave. And it goes right from the bottom of my walls right up to the top and it covers the whole screen. This wave is a representation of what it's like to be a business owner. You go up, down, and then you go down again before you go back up. 
Now, painting this with animal print, I've been in this office coming up for three years and it's never been somewhere that I've felt incredibly proud of. I've been, I felt grateful. I think it's another level, isn't it? When you feel really, really proud. Um, I made some changes last year with some more st storage, Ikea. This has got to be tidied up, but you know, Ikea, fan fantastic. But having a space that I felt really proud of showing off has always, it's, it's not always been there for me. Now, up until very recently, I was still making wire art. And actually, I am working on a huge commission that I'm really excited about. And I've got another couple of like private corporate events that I'm doing. Really excited about those things. But the day to day when orders are coming in and making, I haven't I haven't fallen out of love with doing that. Well, I suppose I have, but no, I haven't. I just love doing this more. I love coaching people. I love the Vivid Business Club. Big up all to the new members that have joined us this week. I absolutely adore that membership. I adore what I'm doing. I adore, adore my vision. And I love the fact that I am helping to change lives with what I teach, what I've been through and how I help other people. Now, a lot of this work is um, uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar. And I talk about getting out of your comfort zone and have recently found by saying do more of the unfamiliar it's such a nicer kind of way to edge out of your comfort zone it's not so savage we can do it in a regulated way our nervous system feels safe we can go do you know what I'm going to try something unfamiliar not uncomfortable just different Let's just do something different and in my pursuit of um not doing wire art all of the time uh i had an extra desk in the in this office because what i used to do is have my wire art over on that side i've have like the whole wall here was was wire in in coils and um i would work here and this would be the backdrop for the podcast so i would do like admin vivid business club cl coaching stuff here and then over there was was vivid wire. I didn't need that anymore. So I I've just flipped it and I thought, you know what? It's time for a makeover. I'm I'm in the next phase. I can feel that I am leveling up to the next level now. I'm something shifted. Something I've had a shifty couple of weeks. And so um the vision I had when I moved in here was to have this big pink wave across the walls with animal print on it. Now, my husband is an artist. He is an artist in a homeless sector hero costume. And that's what he works in, in the local authority. And that's what he does. But he's superpower. I mean, actually, he's got a few, quite a few superpowers, but he's incredibly good at drawing. He's incredibly good at art, at painting, and has done multiple things with his art, went to art college and everything. So he is, you know, artist. An old friend of mine, also an artist. And so my drawing capacity, the way that I, I use a pen and pencil paint, has never measured up to those two people. Uh, even, I mean, those two especially, but anybody else. And what I found with wire art is that I could create something by just moulding this piece of wire. I I can actually, I don't know actually if that's true anymore, but I can actually um, draw better with wire than I can with a pencil. So, so my, I, I've always had this sort of hang up that I wasn't really ever good at art. Then I became an artist and I was like, well, actually, I'm just not good at drawing. And then I was like, oh, I'm not very good at painting. There was this thing in our house that, you know, like I'm rubbish at decorating. And um I just, I don't even know what the change was, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm not having this identity anymore. I'm going to get good at decorating and painting. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to do it really well. And so I, I adjusted it and, and let go of that identity and move forward. So when I was thinking about this wave and I had imagined it so clearly, the vision was so bold in my brain and so vivid. I was like, well, I've, I've got to sing the words of my own songs, haven't I? And do the unfamiliar. So I did. And I painted this 
wave. And and I know for some of you, it might be, well, that sounds really easy. But I literally got a pencil and I just waved up the right, like just went whoosh, of how I felt the business was like. Um, and then I and then I just painted it, just went for it because done is better than perfect. I thought I'd just slap it on the wall, it's paint. What's the worst that can happen? Well, the the first day that I tried it, it was actually this great big bulbous bit that was was about here behind me and it did not look nice. So I was like, okay, I need to sort that out. So I cut and I actually cried about it. And my husband was like, it's only paint, Claire. Like you can just paint over it with white paint. And I was like, really? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So I did. Like it took like three or four layers and I painted over it and you can't even see now. And then the animal print, I um printed from Canva, the animal print I used for my for the for the podcast. So the little bit at the bottom. I took that as a graphic and printed it out and used that as inspiration for the shapes. So literally the, the pattern I use on the podcast is what is behind you. And then I just started painting and I found it so therapeutic and, and I drew it and my, my husband came down because he was just really worried about it, not looking organic. And I was like, what do you think? He was like, yeah, it looks really, really good. That was so incredibly unfamiliar to me. And I did it and then addressed the the office and I think just stepping into the fact that I now have a workspace that is very representative of my brand, of my personality, my vision and what I'm here to do. And that has just it's incredibly shifty for me. One of my clients recently had done literally last week has done something incredibly unfamiliar and she was feeling incredibly nervous about it, as you do. But she was at a festival um, near where we live. She actually doesn't live very far away from me. And she, and I cannot wait. I've got a one-to-one -one with her, one-on-one -on -one meeting with her tomorrow. I cannot wait to talk about the shifts that she's had because of doing this unfamiliar thing. It was celebrating all things Japanese. Um, there was, it was to do in line with the Japanese Blossom Festivals. Um, I hope I've said that right and I've forgotten the name of it but she went with all of her Japanese bread now for my client she has had I feel like a calling to doing to, to showing her skills in Japanese bread and it's like the universe has said you're ready now babe you're ready now to step into this power of making this beautiful produce that is so linked to who she is in so many ways Japanese bread is woven into who she is at her very core and anchors that into her self-belief and she went to this festival and she did um, some demonstrations I think she did three or four and every single one of them she had masses of people watching her huge crowd around her she gained new followers she's gained new people on her mailing list um she's done she sold out of all of the bread that she'd made and it and it does make me feel emotional for her of for just how proud I am of her because she just chose to do the unfamiliar she chose to do something that was incredibly different and out of the box of what she'd ever done before. And it has paid off. And she shifted. Something in her is like, I, I always feel like um, energy when you're doing new, uh, new ideas. It's like, um, like the Krypton Factor, if you're old enough to remember Krypton Factor. Or like something like in... Um, not the Krypton Factor, Crystal Maze as well. Crystal Maze did it, where you would have to like line up some things to allow the the stream of water to go through, or like the ball. You know, like you've got to make sure it's all in the right places to come down. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And I really feel like alignment with energy of what you're here to do in your business is exactly the same. And you, it's you can feel when everything is lining up and the energy is going. Bang, love it. Self-belief is so similar to that. There are so many pieces of the puzzle for you to 
get into place in order for you to have that unstoppable self-belief. And you can get that in seven steps. You can get that by the different, my husband is just coming down as I'm recording. <laughs> I'm recording, babe. <laughs> this is the thing, I've done the office and um, I've got blind, so you can't see in here now. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, what was I saying? So with self-belief, you, you can build up 10x your self-belief in seven steps and having um, energy, having the things in place in order for that self-belief to just shoot, you like just shoot through you, I suppose. It's not the right real, right? Like what I'm trying to say. I think it's really important to acknowledge that this just takes, it does basically just take you to say, I am willing to see what could happen if I work on my self-belief. I am willing to see what can happen if I choose to do the unfamiliar. And then when you start collecting evidence to show that things are moving in the right way, you just can show up and be more visible and have more energy and more clarity in your business. And from that comes growth and money and sales and clients and customers. It's the energy of the alignment of knowing what you're here to do because you've done the unfamiliar. It's just, there's just nothing like it. So my challenge to you is to do more of the unfamiliar. You know, chase that sale, go and email somebody show up in a different way on Instagram, do a live, ask to go on somebody's podcast, um, go and ask to go to an event, go to a connection, a networking event, which if you're local, I'm launching the Vivid Connection Club soon, which is going to be a local networking event, but it's not going to be networking. It's going to be all about connection and about really finding people that are on your side in your local area that, are on the same wavelength as you. It's not going to be about dishing out your, your business cards and like pitching. Blech. We're going to talk about like what you're watching on Netflix and we're going to listen to Beyonce in the background, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, it's going to be magical. It'll be very different. Um, Again, that's unfamiliar for me. Like I haven't set it up before. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm just going to stay curious. This is what, you know, when you've, you've 10x your self-belief, you can be more resilient and more curious. I'm just going to see how it goes. It's going to be an experiment. Very excited about it, though. That's all for me today. I'm giving you a shorter one because last week was mega long. Um, if you have any questions about what to, how to be um, do unfamiliar things, send me a message. Let me know, like, what questions come up for you when I say go and do some more unfamiliar things? What does that look like to you? How does that feel to you? Let's work through it. Okay, right. Take care of yourself, my love, and I will catch you soon. Speak to you later.